what we're going to be at least starting in this video, as it's probably going to end up being a maybe a two-parter, is the feature in Nazi Zombies when you purchase the wall weapon for the first time, the actual weapon mesh appears through the outline. So when I walk up to purchase like the STG, when I buy it, you should see the gun that's in my hand appear there. So that's what we're going to get started on. Now, so what we're going to do is go to our wallweapon.h and we're going to make some changes. So first thing is we don't want the outline to be called wall weapon mesh. Instead, we want it to kind of change this up a bit. So we're going to create a skeletal mesh component. That one's going to be called wall weapon mesh. Whereas the wall weapon mesh that we have now that's static is going to be wall weapon outline, like so. We're going to go to the, go to the CPP and paste wall weapon outline in there, like so. Now we want to include components that er no skeletal mesh component get our wall weapon mesh after we set the root component simply set it to be a u skeletal mesh component change the text up like that then what we can do is we can go ahead and just do setup attachments so wall weapon Mesh setup attachment. The attachment we're setting it up to is the wall weapon outline. All right. So now we want to have positions for that mesh to interpolate to. So currently, well, not really currently, but we want to have a starting position, such as like right here, maybe on the back side of the wall, wherever we want, and have it slowly interpolate so it's coming through the wall stops wherever we want so we need to have two posit two points in space pretty much so we're going to have two f vectors vector start location we're going to have one for the end so mesh end location like so Okay, I'm trying to think that should be just about everything in the actual header that we need to set up. So I'm going to go ahead and compile and relaunch the editor. Now we might have to recreate the uh, blueprint itself. We'll figure that out in a second because of how we're setting this up because the wall weapon is now a added as a component and then being made a child of the wall weapon outline which is the root so it may or may not you know work as intended unless we recreate the blueprint which isn't a big deal at all click this guy wall weapon outline i am not seeing anything in relation to the wall weapon mesh other than this which we cannot really work with so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a test real quick to confirm that that's what the issue is by recreating the wall weapon as a blueprint. I'm just going to leave everything the same. Wall weapon mesh. And there we go. So that's the reason why. So what we're going to do is this deletes. Eventually. We're going to delete our two wall weapons. Go down here to our wall weapons folder. Find our blueprint. We're just simply going to not save, but delete. I have no idea where the other references would be. Outliner. G right there. For wall. We have no wall weapon, so I don't know what I was complaining about. So we're just going to delete it, force delete, and recreate the blueprint. Back to our weapons, find our wall weapon plus plus class, go to weapons, wall weapon, and name this 
bp underscore wall weapon and create the class. So we're just going to set the uh, outline here. This one's going to be the STG case sensitive. What's the bloody thing called? Oh, plane. Plane. Material gets set. So we don't have, I'm just going to set a default mesh, so I'm going to use the STG. That is not spelled right. Rotate it around. you know okay spot to where somewhat matches as you can tell I did not do these to uh, scale at all I just went like kind of traced a random outline that I found so I'm gonna save and this is gonna be our kind of our default uh, weapon so to speak so now we have the STG I'm gonna change the snap size to one centimeter and move it out by one centimeter, so it's not intersecting with the wall. Here, we have our mesh start and our mesh end location. So we're gonna pretty much be going off of the location here, figure out where the start and end are gonna actually be at. I'm just gonna set the snap size to five, put it on the other side of the wall, so it's just in the it's literally just one layer through the wall. We're going to right click on location, copy, go to our wall weapon here. We're going to go to our mesh start location, right click, and paste. Now we need to go this way. That actual plane. Oh, I just realized what I did. I just select the mesh and drag it out one. It's right through the center. And then we're going to right click, select the location again, go back, and the mesh end location, and hit paste. So pretty much now we have the locations of where we want to actually lerp to. So save that. Just going to give this one a uh, to buy STG44. All open STG44. And I'm going to alt, drag out, change this one up to the M1 carbine. So I'll go to our outline here. Materials, we're going to use outline, M1 carbine. Change our weapon mesh to the carbine as well. Size, I guess, is good enough. I'm just going to leave it. Same thing. So pretty much we're going to have negative 5 and positive 5, or negative 5 and 0. So I'm going to copy, just do a paste, set the Y on the start location of negative 5 so that way it matches where it's going to be. We're watching this guy here. Yeah, negative 5 and 5. So that's, the, that's all in relative locations to the actual Oh, what do you call this? The outline. So we have the positions. And let's actually we gotta make sure we set the class. So weapon class is gonna be the STG. This one's gonna be the carbine. Change the by tag to one carbine. Save all and see what possibly broke. STG. Carbine. We are good. Uh, the only thing I'd really want to kind of hide would be the magazine, but that's not too big of a deal. We have our outlines kind of set up. So what I'm going to do now, select the wall weapon mesh, just move it inside the wall. Pretty much just at the start location. And open our wall weapon.cpp, what we're going to do is find our begin play, which is not existent. We're going to do a down here, just make a new protected section. Don't really need to, but I am. Virtual void begin play. Write it. Go ahead and create the implementation. 
we're going to call super begin play. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set our wall weapon mesh, set relative location to equal the, I call it mesh start location. So, and whenever we use it, we want to make it an lerp to the mesh end location. So we already have a replicated boolean here, B is used. So what we're going to do is in this use function, we're checking it for the server. What we're going to do is go down. We're going to do B is used equals true. We're call the on rep. So on rep score weapon purchased. Check. So if B is used, it's false. Well, B is not used, meaning it's false. We're going to perform this. Otherwise, we're not even going to bother running it. That's just to prevent the server from running it, you know, more than once. Then when on rep, while well, uh, weapon purchase is called to set the relative location. So I'm going to create new functions. New void. We we'll call it Lerp weapon mesh to end. I guess that that's a name. <laughs> then I want to have a F timer handle T Lerp mesh handle or T Lerp mesh. Create the implementation of our Lerp function. I want to move above the on rep. Side of actually, we need to include our timer manager. H. And in our on rep, what we're going to do is set it. So get world set time or get timer manager dot set timer. That's t lerp mesh. So this then our function so a wall weapon or weapon to or lerp mesh to end then the speed I guess we're gonna do zero point one fast and true because we want it to loop. So on here what we're gonna do is we're gonna lerp so figure out a new location so f vector new location equals U Kismet math library, which I have not included yet. Which it might let me. Tell us I'll figure it out, which it did. So that is Kismet forward slash Kismet math library dot h. And it'll allow you to have a lerp for floats. And this one's for a vector, so we have v lerp. Have our start and our end. And then I'm not entirely sure what alpha is. I think alpha is so instead we're gonna do F. What is it? V interp. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna use V interp too. So we're going to interpolate. So we have our current. So that's going to be weapon mesh get actor get component location. So is there get relative get relative location? Then we want the new location, which is our uh, what was it called? Mesh end location. We have to pass in the delta time, so get world delta time seconds. Clean this up a little bit. Get delta time seconds. Turp speed. So I'm going to create a 
uh, Blueprint Editable float for this. This U property, so it's going to be float interpolate mesh lerp speed. And by default, I'll set that to just one, or actually 10. Lerp speed for the uh, new location. Then what we're going to do is wall weapon mesh set relative location to new location. Then we want to check tolerance. So if uh, mesh get relative location equals, as you can see, it has parameters here. So we want to check if it equals our new location and then the tolerance. We're going to leave it as that default, so it's going to be a very fine value. So if it does equal it, meaning it's finally at its you know end location, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stopping this timer. Get world get timer manager dot clear timer. Actually, we could just do that, but we only have one timer anyways, and we already have a handle. So clear timer t lerp mesh. I'm going to go ahead and compile and see what probably works or doesn't work. I have no idea, honestly. <laughs> it's 3 in the morning. And I'm get it. Close that down. Good old delay. Alrighty. Uh, let's just see what happens. Alright. Is it even moving? Let's try by setting a uh, set this to like 100. See if it was just going slow. Okay, so it was just going slow. We were just barely poking through the wall. <laughs> right. So let's just get a speed right. So we're gonna do 50. Okay. Not entirely what I thought was going to happen. And it has to do with this guy here. So. Curious if tolerance is distance. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the definition of our equals function here. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the distance because that looked like it was not the actual distance between them. Actually, yeah. So, float distance equals our relative location dot distance. Okay, I'm running up here and I can just go a different route. So F vector distance between current location, location, if distance is, I guess, less than 
zero point. It'll be within about a centimeter, so we're gonna do point oh one of centimeter, and I want to print out the distance. And see what happens. That was not on religion. What I'm thinking was it was only really running once. Like when we had it at 100, so it was just kind of snapping to it. Which I'm thinking uh, that was just based off of the actual size of the jumps. But I'm not entirely sure why it would quit at, I don't know. Let's see what happens, print it out. Distance is incredibly small. Out of curiosity, set a end location to, I don't know, 10. Should force it to pop out. Like so, that was the actual location. Two five. Change you. We're still having issues. So mesh slurp speed fifty. All right, so. Having some issues here. So let's see. I kind of want to do a check, make sure that this flat out equals zero, and see what happens. Because I'm not entirely sure why it's, you know, going part of the way, but I'm almost thinking the this distance at which it's trying to move. Actually, yeah, it might be because of our Lerp speed being too high. It's wanting to do jumps that are too big, so it can't, you know, jump really anymore at that Lerp speed value. So it's just kind of stopping. But then the timer would still run, which is also confusing me here. I kind of want to go to bed. Let's let's just see what happens. You should still be the same. Actually better, and you, better as well. So that ended up being, I guess, why. Let's confirm that the loop does actually stop, which it does. You don't, for a while. <laughs> so let's set you to zero. Let's set you to zero. They end up in the right spot. Oh, our speed was still set to 10, set it to 50. It's more in line with it. So it's working. Now the only thing that I want to do is that is very stuttery. So let's smooth that out by increasing the rate at which the uh, timer is going to fire. And that should really smooth out the movement, as well as allow us to make it move slower while looking smoother, if that makes sense. And we're at 24 minutes. Not bad. Keeps me from having to make a separate video for this anyways. what it looks like. This should probably move a little too fast. 
which it does. So let's drop this down to lerp speed of 10. Still too fast. Let's go a little faster. Double that up to two. Kind of like two. Although it takes forever to get there. the time to it for it to actually stop what we could also do is just change it up a bit so if it's within 0. 0.00005 that only really stop like five runs but it would cut it early so that way in case of issues like that so it makes me curious Yeah, so we have very small values. So I'm going to do a check instead. It's going to stop it. So if distance is less than 0 0.0000, let's do 3. Because honestly, I'm not going to be able to visually see the difference, I think. So I'm going to close it down and uh, just do one more test. And honestly, it should be okay. Then I'm just going to do a quick little test with uh, multiple clients to make sure that it, you know, it's working as intended, which it should be. And we're going to call it. Alrighty. All right, well, that flat out broke it. So I'm just going to revert it back to zero and say screw it for now because <laughs> we'll just have to end up coming back to this. So what we're going to do is just check and see if it, uh, how it works in multiplayer, and if it's good to go, then we'll stop. This video's been running on for a good bit longer than I intended. Play with two. Two. So. Server, client, client. Alright. So the client does not see it. Look, okay, there, I guess, will be a part two. Alright. There's not going to be a part two. What I'm actually going to do is fix it real quick. So what I forgot to do was, it is not set to replicate. But what we need to do is inside the constructor of our wallweapon.cpp, we're going to do set replicates, pass in true, and compile. So for example, if I go ahead and set replicates to true, compile, and go back, test with two, uh, two clients. As you can see, everything's working as intended. So, now that we have it set to replicate, this will be true by default. And we are good to go. So,
yeah. That is all for this one. So I will see you in the next one when we do something else. I really have no idea. I'm yeah, I'm just gonna go to bed. So see ya.